All right, guys. So what I'm about to do is talk to you guys a little bit about how to kill turkeys sometimes. And I say sometimes because I promise you, we don't get it right all the time. Sometimes we do. This morning, turkeys won. Didn't have any to even really to mess with. However, a few days ago, we went to South Dakota and I employed a technique that we wanted to kind of talk to you guys and show you um, how it works and how well it works. And so anyhow, so let me just explain. Now it doesn't matter whether you're a diaphragm call user, a box call user, a slate call user, that part does not matter. I mean, is all you gotta do is be able to make calls because this is gonna require you to call. Now, um, we typically are bow hunting and we bow hunt out of a ground blind um, because we're filming and everything. So. I'm the guy that's always telling people, get in your blind and just be patient. They'll come by as long as you know birds are around. In this particular case, we we're having a hard time locating any turkeys at all. But Warren and I found a turkey goblin about, I don't know, 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, 9 o'clock maybe even. It, it, we'd had snow that night. So anyhow, um, it, you know, and when it snows, don't worry, just go. But any, anyhow, we walk up to this big cliff and if you've been out west and um, it's like a straight drop off but it's timbered and everything and we walked up there and, and I did like what I normally do when you're trying to locate a turkey I'll walk up and I'll start soft and then I might pick it up and I did that I mean right away this bird gobbles we're like, all right, finally we found some turkeys. So we did like everyone else does, you know, and I typically like to see, are they gonna answer one more time, make sure they're answering me and they heard me, and they did. And so what we did was because of this big drop off, we couldn't go down the hill, so we had to stay up on that flat. So we backed off a little bit, set up everything, climbed in our blind, and away we go. We heard them gobble one time right before we got in, so we thought, well, we're good, you know, they don't know what's going on. And then I called and called a few times over the next 35, 40 minutes and nothing. So then I'm like, okay, maybe they didn't actually pinpoint our location. They don't know where we were at. So once in a while, I will do something a little different rather than just sitting and holding like I did. Like if I'm there first thing in the morning, I got birds gobbling, I know they know I'm there, I'll never try this. But in this case, what I did was I'm gonna climb out of the blind. I climb out of the blind, I tell Warren, I'm gonna walk over to the edge, I'm gonna try to make these birds gobble. What we're about to try. and see if they can hear me because maybe they can't hear us from where we backed off. We're 75 yards roughly from the edge of that drop off and they were down from us a little bit. So I got out, I walked over, got to that edge. First thing that I did was nothing. So I come back at them a little bit more. I'll cut a little, a little quicker, a little harder. As soon as I did that, they, they fired off. I'm like, okay, they're still there. So I kind of work them a little bit there. And, and really what I was trying to do was pinpoint where are they? They were far enough away that I wasn't afraid of them seeing me or, or me getting back to the blind, because that's what you're gonna do. And that's where I, I kind of gave this thing the name, the Pied Piper. And for those of you that aren't old enough, like I am, uh, I'm that old that there was a nursery rhyme at one time about a guy that goes into a town and he plays his flute and all the rats come out and he clears the, the city of all the rats and that he was the Pied Piper. All the rats followed him because he was playing a um, pipe, like a flute. And so anyhow, that's what I did. I get over here and I'm playing my turkey call to these turkeys and I get them gobbling and I finally figure out they're not across the canyon, they're on my side, which is perfect. I back off that edge a little bit. I call again in a couple minutes. Now I'm not trying to do all this like really fast. I'm letting the birds do what they need to do. Make that call again. They gobbled, I'm off the edge a little bit. I, I back off again a little farther, call again. They did it again. I'm like, okay, they are answering me and they know where I'm at. And they know that I'm moving away from them. 
So it's okay if I go all the way back to the blind now. So I go all the way back to the blind and climb in. Here's the key. I asked Warren, I'm like, hey, did you hear those turkeys gobbling? And he's like, I heard them, I think, one time. He only heard what he thought was a gobble once, yet I had heard them six or seven times super loud. That just tells you. So when we're talking terrain, it could be a, a, a ridge like we're talking about, it could be a round hill, they're on the other side. It could be a river that's causing that they can't hear you or you can't hear them. I don't know what it is, but if you get a situation like this, sometimes being the patient hunter isn't always the best scenario. In this case, I come back, I climb in the blind, I hit the call about five minutes later, I kind of let things, man, they have come a long ways. And before we know it, two strutters walk in, Warren kills a South Dakota turkey. So we just wanted to go over one more little thing that you can take the Woodhaven calls and do whatever that you want to, but you can take a turkey call. I mean, Woodhaven calls work phenomenally. And again, it doesn't matter. It's not like I was particularly using a diaphragm call. I could have used a slate call. I could have used the box call, but you need to be able to call to do the Pied Piper. So keep that in mind next time. That's just one more little trick to have in your arsenal is the Pied Piper. Go find the turkeys and suck them back where you need them to come to.